Hello people, welcome back to the Digital Aviator channel and in this episode of Flight Sim School we are going to learn how to correctly level off, start climbing, start descending and change your airspeed just by understanding how the power works and how trim works. And of course as always don't apply this in the real world, keep it for your simulator only. Alright people, we have just taken off from Oceano, we're still climbing, uh, I've just leaned the mixture as we passed 3000 feet. We're still, three, uh, we're still at 75 knots, as you'd say, and uh, I didn't change the trim or anything, we're still at the takeoff trim. So the plane is nicely balanced, um, the plane will not pitch it up or down on its own, I don't have to hold the yoke too much to, uh, to keep the plane in this orientation, and we are nice and stable. Um, but at some point, of course, we want to level off, and then a few things will have to change. First we have to lower our vertical speed to, to zero, because in order to level off we need to stop changing our altitude, so our vertical speed needs to be at zero for that. And we want to probably increase our airspeed a little bit, because flying at 75 knots is rather slow, we can fly a lot quicker. So in order to change these two things, vertical speed and airspeed, we will need only the power and the trim, or in other words pitch. pitch uh, the trim of course controls pitch and the throttle controls the power. And what I want to teach you guys in this video is that these two things control slightly different things that you may think. You may think that power controls your airspeed because the more power you have the more forward force you have on the plane and the plane should go forward and if you reduce the power it should slow down. And while you're not incorrect with that, that's exactly what will happen, the result of the different forces that are happening on the plane, which I'll explain in a moment, make it so that the airspeed actually will not change if you use the power, but the vertical speed will change. And this makes sense, because if you look at it, I am at full power, but I'm only at 75 knots. I can't add more power to speed up, so something else has to happen. And the, other, the uh, explanation for that is the trim, uh, or in other words, the pitch. So the trim, of course, which controls the pitch, you would think that that controls vertical speed. As I pitch up, we climb. As I pitch down, we uh, descend. And yes, you're not technically incorrect, but again, due to all of the forces that are happening on the outside of the plane, the actual thing that will happen is the airspeed will change and the vertical speed doesn't really change that much. At least you can't really precisely tune the vertical speed with the trim. You can very precisely tune the airspeed with your trim. So let's see why this is the case and I'll show you this in action. Um, let's see what happens if I try to level off. And the only thing I'm doing is just pitching the plane down. I'm pitching so that my vertical speed goes down and about this much and see if you can spot what's happening. First thing is the airspeed building up. But as the airspeed is building up, look outside, we are now pitching up. So a vertical speed rises and I have to push more on the yoke than I did before in order to keep that vertical speed at zero. And now that I lower the nose again, the airspeed builds up more. And because the airspeed builds up more, the plane pitches up again. And I have to push quite a lot. This is the amount that I'm pushing right now in order to keep that vertical speed at zero. Now there's a third thing happening and that is that the RPMs are building up. Now what's happening here? So let me pause the sim here for a moment and I can explain all of this. So the first thing is uh, the first thing is very simple, the air RPMs are going up. That's very simple, the propeller pushes air backwards of course, but if, as, as we have a higher airspeed, there is less air to push back because there's already uh, a higher airflow. So the propeller, even at the same power, is not held back by the air it has to push back so much, so it can actually spin a little bit quicker. And if you're not careful at full power and you're flying level or descending, you get pretty close or even above the red line. And, and that of course is a danger factor because above the red line the engine is moving too quickly, the propeller spins too quickly, that you risk damaging the propeller uh, or the engine. So if there for example was a slight crack in the propeller at these air speeds, uh, we risk um, you know, just spinning the propeller all, uh, you know, one of the blades completely off the plane. And you know, that's just something we don't really want to do. So stay below that red line. So as the airspeed builds up, the RPMs go up, so we need to lower our power if we want to fly level. I'll come back to that in a moment. Now let's explain why the plane was suddenly pitching up. So this is the amount of force I'm putting on the yoke. I'm going to get let go of the yoke force right now. There we go. And you can see how much the plane tries to pitch up on its own. I'm actually going to prevent that a little bit. We'll go back to 75 knots, <coughs> because that's where the plane was actually completely stable. And yeah, we, we can then see that at higher airspeeds the plane tries to pitch up. And the same is actually true for lower airspeeds, but in the opposite direction. If I pitch up more and let the airspeed lo uh, lower a little bit, and I'm letting go of the yoke again, you can see the plane pitches down on its own. 
So this is actually how the plane is designed to work. Um, the plane will pitch up if you're going too fast and it will pitch down if you're going too slow. So even if I manually pitch the plane up for a few moments and I forgot about it, we will never let our airspeed go too low unless I really, really struggle and manually induce the plane to get at a very li low airspeed. But uh, there should be all kinds of danger bells ringing before that. But yeah, the plane tries to maintain the airspeed that we have it set up for. And we have it set up by using the trim. We are currently at the takeoff trim setting and the plane is then in an orientation or configuration where it manually, sorry, automatically pitches up or down to maintain about 70 knots. So if I trim the nose down a little bit, and I'll show you that happening, we are pitching down, we actually are letting the airspeed build up because I'm, letting, I'm kind of changing that natural intention of the plane to pitch up or pitch down. So there's kind of interesting things happening here. So let's pause the sim here for a moment and let's go to the outside and this will make it clear why the plane pitches up or down at different airspeeds and why we need to trim in order to set the natural tendency of the plane to pitch up or pitch down. In other words, setting our airspeed. So uh, after I explain this, hopefully it will all be a little bit more clear because it might be a little bit counterintuitive. So let's take a look on the outside and see the front of the plane. Now the Cessna Skyhawk has a high wing, uh, is a high wing aircraft. Some wings are in the center of the plane, some, so, some are on the bottom. And this is slightly different for those planes, but you can kind of figure out what will happen to those planes after I explain what's happening here. So imagine the plane is pushing through the air. Of course, air is not just empty space. There is some matter there. If you move your hand through the air or if you're, if you're running, you can definitely feel some kind of force uh, because that's the airflow passing your hand. You know, there's actual matter hitting your hand. So there are some forces applied. And we're actually going quite fast right now. Maybe, um, uh, I don't know how fast we're going uh, uh, as a ground speed, but pretty high speed even at 75 knots. So even though the air is very thin, we still have quite a lot of force on our plane. Now, if you look at the front of the plane, you can see that the uh, surface area is not distributed uniformly. We have actually slightly more surface area on top of the plane because that's where our wings are. So the bottom of our plane is getting pushed by the air less than the top. So it would make sense that if our top is getting pushed back more, the plane starts to, at least the top moves backwards and the plane starts to tilt around its center of mass. In other words, it will pitch up. So the faster we go, the larger the difference between the force on top and the bottom is and the plane will pitch up. If I go slower and uh, the natural tendency of the plane is to pitch down a little bit, the plane will no longer pitch up due to the airspeed because the differences in uh, the top of the plane getting pushed back and the bottom are now lower and the plane will then pitch down. So you can see that with changing the airspeed we change the amount of force applied on the plane and that makes the plane pitch up or down. And like I said we can fight that or correct that with our trim. So let me go back up to the takeoff trim setting and I uh, will go back up to 75 knots and I will show how you can use this knowledge in order to level off. So two things need to happen. We need to lower our vertical speed to zero and we want to increase the airspeed. So of course we are at pretty high power, so it would make sense that if I level off right now, the airspeed will build up. But of course that was what we saw him a moment ago. As the airspeed builds up, the uh, plane will start to pitch up more. So what I'm going to do is I will manually pitch the plane down so that we maintain zero vertical speed. And as always, as we're flying VFR, we want to be looking outside primarily. So look outside, see if you can spot a horizon or some other terrain feature, and see, check out the distance between your dashboard or the compass or some other part of your plane and the horizon. And you can very easily see if the plane's pitching up. So as you have looked at your vertical speed indicator and you've determined, all right, this is zero, look outside, see this distance, and you can see if you need to adjust it. As long as you keep this distance between the horizon and the plane the same, we should stay at roughly zero vertical speed. Of course, occasionally I will glance over to the vertical speed to see if I'm still correct. And as we go at larger air speeds, we need to pitch down slightly. So look at the vertical speed. Now I'm going to power down a little bit because I don't want to exceed the red line RPM. And uh, a nice cruise RPM is around 24 to 2500 RPM. Uh, we'll talk later about how you can calculate the fuel usage and the airspeed at different RPMs. So you can select what RPM you want to cruise at, but somewhere around 24 to 25 is usually okay. So we want to do this. We want to keep the plane level manually until the airspeed is no longer going up or down. So as you can see, our airspeed is pretty much solid at just above 100 knots. And once that happens, we start to trim. And I'm going to trim the nose down. 
because I'm pushing the nose down manually, I want to replace my manual pushing force with the pushing force that the trim tap applies on the plane. And again, I'm looking primarily outside. I'm looking to the distance between the dashboard or the plane and the horizon. And I keep trimming until I am no longer touching the yoke. I'm completely let go of the yoke right now, of my joystick. And I can see I'm no longer pitching up or down and I'm at zero vertical speed. So the steps are hold the pitch manually with the yoke at zero vertical speed at the altitude where you want to level off. Let the airspeed build up. Of course, adjust the power so that we are in a nice cruise range. 24 to 2500 RPM. And remember that as the airspeed still is building up, the RPM will also build up. And then we do this until the airspeed is no longer going up. And then we start trimming. We replace our manual pressure on the yoke with what the trim does. So now when we look at our actual trim tab, you can actually see that it is now slightly, if I zoom in a little bit, it's only a very little bit, there it is. You can see that the trim tab is now slightly pointed up. So it's kind of like a miniature, um, Oops, miniature elevator. So what I've did, what I did is I had my elevator. I was using that manually, and I've replaced it with the little trim tab. So now my elevator is completely straight again, but the trim tab is keeping care uh, of what the plane is pitching for. So the intention of the plane is now to have our nose uh, down a little bit. As we build up airspeed, the plane would otherwise pitch up but we have now forced the plane a little bit nose down to cancel that out and the plane is balanced and neutral and it's not pitching up or down. That is how you want to level off. Now what we did here is change two things, vertical speed and airspeed. But what if we only want to change one of the two? What if I want to stay at, in this case, 105 knots and I want to climb or I want to descend? And the opposite, what if I just want to change my airspeed? What if I want to go a little bit quicker? What if I want to go a little bit slower? but I don't want to descend or climb. I want to maintain 6,500 feet in this case. Well, we can do that very easily. And like I said, power controls vertical speed, trim controls airspeed. These control the opposite of what you may think. So the power, while it does increase the airspeed, as the airspeed changes, the pitch changes. And the only thing that will really change is the vertical speed. And I can prove this to you. Let's lower the power, and because I want to descend. So I lower the power a little bit. And initially, yes, of course, the airspeed will go down. But as the airspeed goes down, uh, the top of the plane is getting pushed back less and we are trimmed nose down. So we are pitching down. So we are now descending. And of course, the airspeed drops a little bit, but now it's going back up because we are descending. And as the airspeed uh, is going back up, we are pitching up again. Vertical speed goes a little bit less and we are now pitching up. And because I'm pitching up, the plane will slow down again. Now this will oscillate a little bit. So what you want to do is, as you've adjusted the power, just pitch the plane manually so that the airspeed is completely stable at where we started before. So now I'm back at 105 knots. I've pitched the plane to cancel out that oscillation. Airspeed is not changing, so I've pitched to maintain this airspeed here. And as you can see, the only thing I've changed is the power, but the vertical speed is lower, my airspeed is still the same. Because as I lowered the power, the airspeed went down which makes it so that the plane pitched down as we had less force on the top of the wing and we started descending. But as I descended, the airspeed went back up and on average the airspeed stayed the same. And you want to cancel out that oscillation manually with the yoke. You don't touch your trim. As long as you don't touch your trim, the airspeed doesn't change. So if you want to descend or climb or level off without changing the airspeed, just use your power. Let's see if, uh, what happens if I add full power now. And it will pitch up a little bit because we don't want the airspeed to build up. So I pitch up. Oh, there's five, uh, one of the five knots. So pitch for the airspeed. And uh, we should now be in a climbing orientation as soon as I get my airspeed back to one of the five. There's one of the five knots roughly. And as you can see in my vertical speed, we are slightly climbing. Um, because I'm trimmed quite a lot of nose down, we can't really climb that quickly. But, you know, we did increase our vertical speed. Our airspeed is still the same. Look outside, the plane is not pitching up or pitching down on its own. And if we go back to 24 to 2500 RPM, we should be roughly back at our level orientation. There we go. Still at one of the five knots. And a vertical speed is zero. That's how you climb and descend and level off without changing the airspeed. But what if you want to change your airspeed? Well, what we do is, we yes, we do adjust the power because as you saw, the power does change the airspeed. But what we want to not have is the plane pitch up or down as a result of the changed airspeed. So let's say I want to lower my airspeed to 80 knots. I will power down. 
but I'm not letting the plane pitch down. So I'm going to manually start applying a little bit of pitch up force on the yoke. And again, look outside, look at the horizon or a mountain ridge or a forest, whatever it is, and see if, you know, see if the distance changes with your dashboard, see if you're pitching up or pitching down. We want to maintain that. Keep your vertical speed at where you had it before. Now I'm reaching 80 knots, I'm adding a little bit of power again so that we don't slow down more. And now I'm going to replace my, uh, whoops, my manual pushing force with the trim. So I'm pushing the nose uh, up, so I'm going to trim the nose up in this direction and replacing my manual force with the force that the trim tab applies. And we do this again until I, never, uh, until I no longer have to hold the yoke and we are at 80 knots and we are at the same vertical speed. So the vertical speed hasn't changed, we haven't climbed or descended, but I did change my airspeed. So, let's recap this. If you want to level off or climb, adjust the power and then pitch so that you maintain the airspeed before you started adjusting the power. If you want to slow down or speed up without climbing or descending, we lower the power or add power to slow down or speed up, but we then fight the ten intention of the plane to pitch up or pitch down and we pitch so that we maintain the same vertical speed and then I replace my manual force with the trim or we can do all of that at the same time let's say I want to descend but at 100 knots so I will manually pitch the plane down I add a little bit of power maybe and uh, let's pitch until I'm uh, let's say I want to descend at uh, 100 knots and at 1000 feet per minute so as you can see I'm already at 100 knots but I'm not at 1000 feet per minute descent rate so I'm lowering my power because I want to descend quicker and I'm pitching for 100 knots again pitch or trim or whatever you're using controls airspeed power controls vertical speed so I'm still a little bit too high vertical speed I want to lower the power even more I'm still at 100 knots here we have it, and now I'm going to replace my manual pitching down with the trim. There we go. I'm no longer holding the controls. I can see the plane is not pitching up or down anymore, and the vertical speed is 1000, at least negative 1000, and I'm descending at 100, uh, 100 knots. So you can also do both at the same time, as long as you remember that adding or uh, releasing power lowers or, uh, or decreases the air, uh, sorry, the vertical speed. And remember that pitching, which you set manually or with the trim, sets your airspeed. So power is for vertical speed, trim is for airspeed. That is the most important thing from this video. And if you understand this, you can fly the plane almost perfectly. The only thing that we need to learn now is to make turns, which we'll do in a, a very soon future video. Um, but as long as you keep your turns at a very slight bank, you should be okay. So. A little bit of homework for you guys because I think this is probably the most important thing from uh, to learn for actually flying and controlling the plane in the air. Understand what the trim tab does, understand what the power does in the, in the air and uh, you can figure out how to control the plane perfectly. So do these three exercises, only adjust the vertical speed, only adjust the airspeed or do both at the same time. And if you do this a few times, maybe for an hour over the next few days or so, whatever you want to do, you probably will uh, understand this completely. Something will click in your mind and it will make flying so much easier and a lot more fun and safer because we can now focus on more important things and no longer be focused on the airspeed and the vertical speed. Because we want to be looking outside, I want to look at my checklist, I want to talk on the radio, I want to read charts, um, I want to navigate, so we need to be looking outside and at other things than our instruments. The instruments are not telling the plane how it is flying, they are just a very abstract indication of how the plane is flying. How the plane is flying actually happens outside, so look outside more than on your instruments. Anyway guys, thank you for watching, do this exercise a few times and I hope I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.